Professional cyclists eat loads. 120 grams of carbohydrate an hour is now typical during races. This huge amount of fuel combined with talent and hours of training enables them to ride at mind-blowingly fast speeds for hours on end. But what would happen if the rest of us tried to fuel like a pro and eat that vast amount of energy? Will it give us a turbo boost and improve our performance or would we be running to the toilet? <coughs> Can you simply go faster by increasing your fuel consumption? And when I say we, I actually mean Hank, GCN's very own walking, talking test guinea pig. Looking forward to this, pal? No. That's the spirit. Eating while cycling is standard and best practice for cyclists of all levels when you're exercising for more than a couple of hours in order to not run out of energy. Typically, you'll want to try and consume about 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour, more for larger riders and less for smaller riders. That amount of fuel equates to a bottle of energy drink plus a gel or a chew every hour or two large bananas, five slices of bread, or my favorite, 15 jelly babies. Why are the 15 jelly babies? We haven't got them. Hank and I are going for a ride, and as the scientist of the group, I'm going to be running this experiment and present purely for observational purposes and to give Hank morale, because he's gonna be trying to consume 120 grams of carbohydrate every hour for six hours. And yes, math fans, that's 720 grams of carbohydrate at least. Now don't worry, Hank, because this is the latest scientific thinking from, well, our partners at Precision Fuel and Hydration. Now they work with top athletes and cycling teams, and they've given us their exact fueling strategy for one of their top pro riders. How are you feeling? Not very good, <laughs> if I'm honest. Well, don't worry, because it first begins with preloading. Before we even go on the ride, yeah. so we're going to have some electrolyte in here. We know from your sweat test that you were, uh, well, a, a thousand milligrams of electrolytes is good for you. So Perfect. <laughs> here we go. But not only that, pro nice. cyclists got to got to fuel up before a big big foot race or ride. So I've got you some breakfast. Here's oh. some porridge. Right. Well done. That's extra raisins. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted extra raisins, I got you some extra raisins. Thanks, yeah. That's what you might, but it's, yeah. When did you make this? Just made it five minutes ago. I guess this is gonna be the state of play. This is the start of the day. So this is, you're looking at about 120 grams of carbs in that porridge as okay. well. Wow. So yeah. This really does actually take me back, not only the taste, but also the forcing the food down my neck before a race. When you're nervous, the last thing you always eat. Not that I'm nervous going road with you, but I don't know. <laughs> now, while well, Hank's eating that and uh, getting food sweats, allow me to tell you that we are reliably informed that on the hardest race days, so the hard days of the Tour de France or one day races like Paris-Roubaix or the Tour of Flanders, some of the pro riders are consuming up to 120 grams of carbohydrate every hour. Now, in the case of uh, Hank riding six hours today, that looks like this. Oh, I dropped one. Oh, and this as well. That's gonna go in your, your bottles. Um, oh, and it's a bit of electrolyte as well. Hang on. Well, you're kidding, right? Keep eating your porridge. Hold on a minute, mate. <laughs> Where on earth am I gonna carry all of that? Well, don't, wor don't worry, as it's my experiment, I'm going to carry some of it for you. Oh, wow. Right. Let's set off, mate. I've got your carbs in uh, in my camel bag. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> you do need a rucksack to carry all them carbs. Right, let's go. Oh. Right, 30 minutes in. It's uh, time for your first gel, mate. In terms of what that fueling actually looks like and how they do it, Precision has shared some records with us of what pro riders they support have done. And one of them is Victor Campenart in stage 12 
of last year's Tour de France, which is a really hard stage. And in that, he was consuming over 120 grams of carbs an hour. And what we can see from the data they've shared is that that was mostly in the form of bottles, liquid carbs. Which makes sense because it's just so much easier to take those kind of carbohydrates on board. Yeah, and typically that's, you know, 40 to 80 grams is coming from bottles. And then they're topping that up with, you know, one or two chews or gels, each of which contain around 30 grams of carbohydrate. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. They're thinking, look, Hank, I used to be a pro. Why can't I consume that many carbohydrates? One, I don't know if I can, but I'm worried about it just because when I was racing, we weren't consuming that many carbohydrates. And to be honest, I actually struggled eating on the bike. Yeah, it's when a we're big racing. change that's happened in the last few years in modern racing is that the amounts of carbs they're consuming is just far higher. 35 kilometers, one hour 25, a bottle down, a chew down with 30 grams of carbohydrates. How am I feeling? Not too bad. Feeling quite sprightly, but we're only an hour and a half in. No excess farting just yet. We're all right. Right, we are two hours in, my friend. How are you feeling? Feeling all right. I mean, I can feel a sensitive stomach. Yeah. Like, you know where you can just like, you notice your stomach and things are moving about in there. It's a lot of sugar that you're taking on board. Yeah, it's... A it's a lot. And a anything else you're noticing? Yeah, I've got like a bit of a furry teeth. Yeah? You know when you get like, you just eat loads of sugary foods, you kind of get this like layer of fur. Well, that's the thing, you know, this amount of carb intake, it, it probably does have a, a big dental impact on, on top athletes. Yeah. Uh, one of the things though that Precision have told us is that it is really hard to do this. You should start to feel pretty sick and, and gross because they advise that athletes train their guts and they do like a, a six to eight week kind of gut training program where they increase the amount of carbohydrate during their training and then they, they, they get used to taking it in. You didn't mention that to me. No, no. Funny that. We better carry on though. Got a long way to go. We, you might have noticed we've got clothes on now and that's because it started to rain. Yeah. We're filming in England, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, How are you feeling though? I mean, I, I'm starting to burp more than I normally would. Even more. Even more. Um, uh, what about what about airborne toxic events? No, not not quite so many of them. Hasn't reached that yet. No, it hasn't reached cool. that. Do you know what, mate? Yeah. Just been thinking. If I did this strategy, trained it, worked on that carb intake. I reckon I could have won Flanders. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think you probably could have done as well. I mean, Roubaix, maybe a bit of a push. All right, but Flanders, yeah. I think I got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, you're right though, there is an interesting, you know, thing with it, in that in this modern era now, we're seeing breakaways go longer. Yeah. You know, we're seeing the racing faster, right from the gun. And, you know, the Tour de France, fastest ever, you know? And I think a contributing factor to that is these modern fueling strategies because the riders have got more energy. Trucking on over three hours. One thing I have noticed though is that I'm actually feeling all right. This is probably the best fuel that I've ever been during my riding career, I was always so underfueled. It's terrible at it. But now I've just been stuffing my face with energy and carbs. I'm actually feeling all right. But one thing I have done is like totally lost count of how much carb I've actually chucked in my gob. And I did notice at Lotto, at E3 Hallebeck, they had actually stem notes and their nutrition plan was on their stem notes, meaning they can tick off 
as the race goes on what they need to eat, how many carbs, how many electrolytes, etc. And it's just plain and easy to see. And I think that's definitely something I've noticed. Well, hang for going four hours now. How are you feeling? To be honest, energy levels are pretty good. I'm, I'm not surprised. I think a lot of the time you under fuel. I think and actually. I think that's part of the generating you've come from. I think. I just don't think I've ever fueled really properly. I've, it's the last thing I think about when I'm racing, is eating. I'm more focused on holding the wheel, holding the pace. And you feel that you've got more energy now? Oh, 100%. I'm nowhere close to bonking, where after three and a half hours, normally, normally I'd be feeling pretty low. I'd have a sugar low. But I've actually maintained really good energy levels. I'm sitting at a similar speed. What I have done all right. I'm able to put out a good amount of power. If I'm honest, I think this is the first time in my life I've actually fueled properly. <laughs> Feeling better than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I felt like I needed a little rest back there. Yeah. So I went and died in the cafe and glad I did. <laughs> but I thought you might say that. I need to put some guts harder. Really put the 90 gram gel, big boy. Come on. See it off in one. Are you actually Down serious? the hatch, do it, come on. I am serious, yeah. When am I not serious? Is this what they would do in a race? Have 90 grams of, car of carbs? Do it, smash it. I just don't think this is right. It is right. It's the science. Sometimes I wonder why I put my body through this. Ooh. I mean, surprisingly, it tastes good. Cyclists are often very weight conscious and they're all like you know, eating disorders and things like that associated with cycling, which I think can lead to people doing things like fasted rides and under fueling. But what you've got to remember is that if you're riding at 200 watts, which a lot of amateurs can sustain, then at that pace you're burning around 700 calories an hour. So if you were to consume 120 grams of carbs, which is the upper end of what's kind of possible, then, you know, that's around 500 calories an hour that you're looking at there. So you're still in a deficit. Apart from being Why wet, are you looking so happy? Apart from being ripped, like, I mean, I'm soaked too. How are you feeling? We've, we're like five hours, like. Yeah. <laughs> Not feeling that great, if I'm honest. Yeah? It's about an hour back to bath from here. No, I think it's just because I had 90 grams of carbs. Yeah. And then on top of that, I had 30 grams you're not, of You're normal chip self right now. Well, no, because I just don't, I don't, I don't feel that great. I think, right, this is where you take I can feel, gel. I can feel like I'm struggling to digest that well, 90 grams is, of carbs. This, I think that's one step this too is, far. This is the hour where you win, or, where you win Flanders. This is the final hour of the race. So, well, that gel but, I'm not, I'm, you? but I'm not doing Flanders. I'm riding around Acton Turdville. <laughs> like, you're just forcing me to be sick now. It's taking the. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going into, going going into, into the nose bag. What are we going here? I'm trying to find a caffeine one. If I do this, what yeah. will you do? Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll sort something. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm always up for a challenge. I guess the viewers can comment in the comments section something that they think I should do. Yeah. Uh. Can you hit that thumbs up and let him know he's got to do a stupid challenge like this? <laughs> <coughs> I actually feel a bit ill. Give me two minutes. This is the kind of stuff that I think people really do subscribe <coughs> to on this channel. Now, as we get into this sixth hour and Hank isn't feeling very well, the reason why I wanted to do this at least six hours was because this is the point at which most people start to really struggle and reject that kind of carb intake. Sorry, mate. Yeah. The thing is, there's not much scientific research done on this because it's something that's incredibly hard to get willing participants to ride for six hours taking this much carbohydrate. What we do have, though, is lots of anecdotal evidence from people who've done Grand Fondos and such the like who often report that they reach this point where their body just can't take, take the, 
the high carb intake any longer. One of the things I wanted to stress though, is that we don't recommend that you try this at home. There are instances where high carb intake is really useful, but when professionals are doing it, they're riding at a much higher intensity than what regular people like us typically ride at. Tadej Pogacar in the Tour de France riding at 400 watts is burning around 1,500 calories an hour. Whereas, you know, me riding at zone two is burning 700 calories an hour. And there's more, because at that high intensity of around 400 watts or so, Tadej Pogacar is burning purely glycogen at that point and not fat. Whereas someone like me or you riding at zone two is burning a mixture of fat and glycogen, which means you don't need to fully rely on glycogen as your fuel source. And that means you don't need to eat as much of it. Now, if you're wondering how much you should consume while riding, well, that sort of 60 grams an hour is kind of a good benchmark, but Precision have a handy calculator on their website in which you can put in various variables and it will suggest based upon you know, what you can do, the kind of intensity you're going to be riding at, length of your ride and various other metrics, how much you should consume. So check that out. But for reference, when Killian Kelly, our current resident beginner and statistician, takes on the Tour of Flanders Sportive, he's going to be aiming for around 75 grams an hour. That's enough of that. It is seriously grim. Hank's struggling. I think we uh, should get back to GCM Megabase. Uh, we made it. We did. And I've got a tea. I'm warming up. Yeah, because it was blooming cold out there. But I've got to say, I'm actually quite impressed with my performance out there. Well, I mean, I thought you wouldn't, you would have got about three hours in and you'd be puking and yeah. doing poos. I think it just shows that, you know, for the majority of my 10 year career, I just didn't feel enough. I just didn't feel properly. Really? Yeah, because I actually, I, I mean, I haven't done a huge amount of training, but I actually felt like my, lev my, my energy levels were good. You know, I felt good on the bike and it only came up to the, you know, past five hours where you made me chug 90 grams of carbs. Well, when we've done epic rides in the past, and we've done quite a few now. <coughs> we have. I've That's always true. been surprised at how little you've eaten. Yeah. Even when we did that um, El Tour de Tucson. How little you ate was I, ridiculous. I, I think I've just gone, you know, back to the old days where I just barely ate. Part of me wants you not to eat anymore <laughs> because you're already really good not eating much and I'm worried you'll get even better like well, than me. So. It's changed my mindset on fueling. I've got to say that. And I, mm. I, I'm, you know, and I am going to take more carbs and I'm going to stick to a strategy for when I do my next challenge because I actually think it will help me hugely and I've just shown you know, yeah. in the last five hours that I did better than I thought. But that said, the take home messages are you do need to train your gut and you probably don't need to eat as much carbs as what Hank was trying to eat no. on this ride because we're not pros, we're not riding at ridiculous, you know, power outputs that the pro riders can sustain for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, most of the time we're just going to be be able to use, you know, a lot more fat as fuel and also carbs. So, yeah. you know. Well, I hope you guys learned something throughout this video in this experiment. And uh, let us know in the comment section below what you thought of my fueling strategy. And, uh, well, what you've experienced yeah. yourself with, with fueling and bonking. Yeah, exactly. And hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, because we're going to go and get warmed up. Because this is good. <laughs> Still cold. Is it gone in my bones? It's literally gone. I'm, I've had enough of UK weather. Oh, England. 10 out of 10. Wouldn't recommend. Brilliant.